If you've been reading through the Daily Walk Bible with us this year, you know that we're on the home stretch of the Old Testament and the last quarter of the year, we're going to get to dive into the New Testament, the life of Christ, the establishment of the early church. But we've got one more section left in the Old Testament, those final 12 books called the Minor Prophets. And if your Bible's like most Bibles, the pages kind of stick together there. You may need to stop in the table of contents when we get to these really unfamiliar books. Don't be deceived by the name Minor Prophets. All it means is books like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel, they're longer. So they're called major prophets. Then we get to the 12 that are shorter. Most of these can be read in a single sitting. The first of these is called Hosea, and, and really it dramatizes for us exactly the point I'm trying to make. Minor prophets, not minor in importance, just shorter. In fact, my personal belief is that most of the major problems the church in our country is struggling with right now are the same themes addressed in these minor prophets. The first of these is the book of Hosea, and some have called Hosea the, the greatest prophet of all. He writes in about um, in the 8th century BC, he's talking to the northern kingdom Israel, and he's warning of their impending judgment at the hands of the Assyrians. But though there's a lot of doom and gloom in this book, there's also a message of hope. And what makes Hosea unique is he doesn't just put it into words, he lives it out. God asked Hosea to do something very difficult. He asked him to marry a woman named Gomer. If God had asked me that, that might have been a deal breaker right there. But Hosea is to marry Gomer and he's told she's not going to be faithful for you. Can you imagine knowing that in advance? And yet God clearly told him to do this, so they marry. And sure enough, she cheats on him. She sleeps with another man, maybe multiple men. We're not sure exactly. And what's amazing about this is Hosea repeatedly takes her back. Now, what is supposed to be the message of this is it's a parable. It's saying the same way that Hosea was betrayed by his wife, Israel, you've betrayed God, who is like your husband. But like Hosea in the story, God has so much grace, so much mercy. He, he repeatedly receives Israel back. And by implication, the same is true for us. He doesn't give up on us. He's made a commitment. He's established a covenant when we enter into a relationship with God, and God keeps his promises. It's, it's so much so that in the book of Hosea, you know, there's finally a time when it is just, it leads her into a life of slavery, and Hosea has to pay the price to purchase his own betraying wife out of her bondage. What love. What an example for us. As you read this book this week, think about, think about times in your life, maybe when you've fallen short and you've disappointed God, you've betrayed him. Certainly there's words of warning in this book that God takes sin seriously. But the main idea of this book is we have a God who loves us, who loves us unconditionally, who doesn't give up on us, who's willing to take us back again. In fact, he loves us so much that he paid the price to buy us out of our bondage, our slavery to sin, by Jesus dying on the cross in our place. In so many ways, Hosea speaks to, it's his own autobiography, it's also talking about contemporary world events, but it's looking ahead to the love that God will express to each of us through sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place. You're going to love this book. It'll, it'll break your heart in spots. But in the midst of the detail, don't lose sight of the big picture. This is a story about not just Hosea's love for his wife, but God's love for Israel. In fact, God's love for all of us. Read it. Meditate on it. Think deeply on it. And, and then do some self-examination to see, is there an area where I'm falling short of what God has for me? Because he loves me so much, I don't want to break his heart with my unfaithfulness. And I know you don't either. We'll see you next time right back here on Walkthrough Voices.